Oh, and welcome to a very special edition of AWS On Air. And why it's special? The clue is in the hat. So I'm Steve Roberts, developer advocate for .NET and PowerShell at AWS. And today I'm joined by Jasmine. Hello, I'm Jasmine Kyles. I lead a product management and marketing team here at AWS. Awesome. So why is it special? Well, if you're a fan of Formula One motorsport, as I am, then you'll know that today in Maranello, Italy, Ferrari launched their new car for the F1 2023 season. But additional to that, there's a new fan app, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So to go with the new fan app, we have a new This Is My Architecture video episode. So we're going to dive into that first. Then we're going to come back with some really special guests to talk about both the car launch and the launch of the fan app. So let's hit the video. Even as a young boy, watching the brave drivers take to the track in their highly engineered cars as they battle for supremacy in the ultimate motorsport of Formula One, I was obsessed with Scuderia Ferrari. The fiery red finish, the sleek lines, the bleeding edge technology of the race cars. This was an innovative company, always pushing the boundaries of horsepower and performance. Today, I'm still a passionate fan of La Scuderia Ferrari. And with the new season's car introducing a host of new performance enhancements and technological innovations, excitement for this year's F1 season is at an all-time high. But as a technologist, there's another innovation that Scuderia Ferrari have been working on for us die-hard fans that I might just be as excited about. Join me on this special episode of This Is My Architecture with Scuderia Ferrari. We travel to Maranello, Italy, and dive deep into the technology behind their new mobile fan app, giving passionate fans an adrenaline-filled experience. Every successful business starts with a great idea. Today, moving from concept to reality is easier than ever before. Join us as we travel around the world and meet developers, architects, and innovators to learn how they're building on the AWS cloud. Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I've invited some of my Tifosi friends over. Hey, welcome. Great to see you. That means fans in Italian to come and watch a Formula One race today. See them all on their phones over there. I guarantee you, they're not bored. They're getting the latest exclusive updates from the new Scuderia Ferrari fan app. Remember that other technology I was excited about? Let me show you. This is super cool for a fan like me. But with F1's explosive growth in popularity fueling Scuderia Ferrari's fan base, the team is turning to some clever technology to help. It uses AWS Analytics services to tailor to fan profiles. Enzo Ferrari once said that Ferrari is really all about its people, which is why it will continue long after I'm gone. Well, he was sure right about that. They've always invested in fans like myself. To understand why, I need to travel to Italy where it all began. But before I go, I got a race to catch. Maranello, Italy, the home of Ferrari and their Formula One racing team founded in 1929. Ferrari's storied heritage of competition includes over 240 race wins and over 780 podium finishes. For anyone who follows this motorsport, it's legendary and awe-inspiring. In the modern era, Scuderia Ferrari's passion for competition is shared by their two talented drivers, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz and their spirit for innovation is driven by Laurent Mickey's team racing director. So Laurent, how do you think this extends the team's spirit to the Scuderia Ferrari fans? Well, you know, Ferrari is a big family and a very important part of this family is our Tifosi, our fans. They are pushing us, they are with us in every moment of our racing life, when we have good moments, when we share victories, but also when we have more difficult moments. So really for us, anything we can do to get closer to our fans is of a vital importance. Scuderia Ferrari is the only Formula One team to have competed in every season of the World Championship since its creation in 1950. Throughout their history, they've garnered an almost religious zeal from their fan base. Charlie, 
why does Ferrari care so much about its fans? So we have the most incredible fans in the world, and they're not fans, they're tifosi. There's an estimated quarter of a billion tifosi around the world. So everywhere we go, we're met by this huge wall of red support and enthusiasm. And it drives our competition. So that's why we care. They care about us and we care deeply about performing and delivering for them. Each year, a new F1 car like this one takes to the track. And I, like most other fans, couldn't be more excited. So what are some of the things that the Tifosi are looking for? So I think it's about access, it's about coming into our world. And what we're looking to do is create that atmosphere and that access for them. Bring them inside the team, explain the technology, give them better access to the drivers and the engineers and explain what's happening in a race season. And if we can do that, which we will, we'll be taking them inside Formula One in a really meaningful way. All right, we are back. And not only are we back, but we're back with our very special guests. We'll be going back to the This Is My Architecture video later on to show some more clips. But for now, let's have our guests introduce themselves and let's talk about the new launch. Who wants to go first? Shall I go first? Oh, go, go for it. it. Go for it. Special so you should certainly go first. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm speaking from Maranello, Italy. I'm Silvia Gabrielli. I'm the Chief Digital and Data Officer for Ferrari. And so I was part of the team that together with uh, AWS was launching this fan app. Cool. Excellent. Silvia, great to see you again. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll do a quick introduction about myself. Uh, you saw me a little bit in the video, but Adrian DeLuca, I head up the prototyping and customer engineering team here at AWS. An exciting day indeed, Steve, to be mm -hmm. here. Yep. Um, One of the two Stefanos is going to have to go next. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I am your turn. So <laughs> you yeah. I, can, I can go next. Uh, Stefano Marciani. Uh, I grew up in a, in a small town 10 minutes from Maranello, but currently I'm uh, living in uh, Mountain View, California. I'm the worldwide tech lead for software-defined vehicles in AWS. So, nice to meet you. And finally, there's me, Stefano Sandrini. I'm a senior manager for Solutions Architecture team based in Milan, Italy from AWS. I was part of the initial team that designed the architecture of the fan app. Awesome, okay. Well, I, as an F1 fan, I'm gonna to come to Silvio, Silvio first. Please tell us about the reveal of the new SF23 cart in Maranello. How's it been? What's the reaction been like? So it was an amazing day. Uh, it was the first time we were launching a new car in Maranello in Fiorano track that is owned by Ferrari. And it was really special because we had the chance to have here some Tifosi that were involved. We had here our partners and AWS team, of course, was part of this day. And um, so we had the full morning and, uh, you know, gathering together, interviews with the, with the, with the drivers, with Fred Basser, with the, our CEO. Um, and, then, and then, of course, there were the reveal of the car, which was beautiful, of course. And then we had uh, five laps where the two drivers um, were driving and, you know, to test really the, the, the car for the very first time. And it was the very, the, the very first time in our history that it was done like this, the launch, the reveal of a car. So it was really a live event. And I mean, it was key. It was really part of this new uh, experience to have this fan app that we were we will be talking today about because this way it was not only you know the people attending here on site, but it was really a, a, an event that we were able to broadcast worldwide to our tifosi, to our to our fans, as, as Charlie was mentioning. So that was really. Uh, an, awful, an awesome experience to be to be able to share with uh, with the family that is, that is our Tifosi base, what was happening today in Maranello. Nice. So Sylvia, let's talk more about the new fan app. What was the challenge your team was trying to solve with the new app? So you know, I mean, today through the social media, you can reach really a lot of people. The point is that the content that you will deliver through the social media is uh, so social media is um, uh, let's say immediate uh, but very um, limited. Let's say 
what we wanted to provide was really a more uh, engaging experience for our fans, for our Tifosi. Uh, so we wanted to have a kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. And this was only possible through this app that the, the Tifosi are downloading since a few days. So we were advertising this only a few days ago, just in time for the launch of the new car. And what is really um, enabling us is to provide some exclusive content. That's, that's the key point of this app where we can deliver and we want to deliver exclusive content to our Tifosi that will be the behind the scenes of the season uh, of today, first of all, and then the whole season delivered only to our fans. So that's, that's why we are building a specific app which will be another channel, but it will be the privileged channel, let's say, to reach our Tifosi. So I'm glad you mentioned Tifosi there. We've heard it several times. I mean, this is the, the huge fan base that Ferrari has. I mean, fanatical fans, right? <laughs> Stefano, Stefano and Adrian, I, I know that you are all members, Tifosi members, right? So what, is the, what does the launch mean to you, the fan app and the car? Adrian, let's uh, start with you. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you know, just watching the reveal today, uh, it's always an exciting time as, as a fan. You know, a new season marks a reset on the last. And, you know, the hopes and dreams of, of us as, as Tifosi, you know, gets to start again. So uh, I was actually also lucky enough to be in Maranello just a couple of weeks ago for what, what's called the wake up. This is when the drivers actually return to the factory and, and start getting warmed up for the season ahead. So to me, uh, my journey actually started a little bit earlier than, uh, than what it usually would. But, you know, I think to, to Sylvia's point, you know, for most fans, you know, not all fans get to go to a race or are lucky enough to go to a race. But the lens that most people get is through an F1 broadcast. And, and obviously the broadcast quality the, you know, the onboards and, and the new data that is actually now revealed through things like F1 Insights that AWS has helped yeah. pioneer over the last couple of years has been amazing. But it really is just a small window of what actually goes on in the team. You know, if you think about the fan app, the fan app is really a journey of what the team is actually going through during a race season. And it's even more than that. It provides background and history of the team and, you know, performances on some of these historic tracks. Um, you know, it really educates, I think, um, not just existing fans like me, but also these emerging fans, um, you know, that, that, that Formula One has been, been bringing. So, um, you know, it, it, it not only goes into the, you know, to the drivers and team principles that we see in the broadcast, but it allows fans the opportunity to really go deeper into the team, you know, meet some of the engineers, some of the pit crew and, and some of the enormous number of people, you know, that, that go behind this, this amazing team. And, you know, if I could say, Sylvia, obviously I'm not going to say too much, but there is a, a huge number of people there in Maranello, um, you know, that are sitting in the factory. What you see on the pit wall and what you see on the broadcast is just a fraction of uh, what makes Scuderia Ferrari uh, you know, obviously do does what it does best. That's true. Yep. If yeah, I say yeah. Stefano, which one of you is going to answer? But what about you? Yeah, I can go next. I can go next. No problem. So kind of difficult to mix uh, passion and, uh, you know, straight thinking in this moment. Because again, as I told <laughs> you, I grew up in a, in a place that is literally 10 minutes from Maranello. I was going there to see Schumacher uh, testing the car exactly like today. So at that time, I was at university later on. And uh, then I ended up, by the way, working for Ferrari. The first part of my career, I did two demos to Jean Todd. So, you know, oh, okay. historic part of the historic part of the company and so on. Yeah. I have still many friends from that period. Uh, one of my best friends is Pierre Giorgio Grossi, who is the CEO at that time, Hi, PRG. Hope you're uh, watching the live stream and so on. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but you know, it's just it's more than a story, right? So again, it's it's not just like that being a was or being there. You gotta think while I was at the university studying with my friends, uh, I was hearing the engine roar in the background, living there. You can really hear that, right? While they are trying the new car and stuff. And uh, you know, that, that place of Italy is not Rome, it's not like uh, Venice, 
it's a non-touristic place of Italy, right? So, it, and th th that was a scream even for us, for the people from the local area, just to say, this is a scream, we exist in the world of the global state, right? So that was really, it's part of who we are as Emilia Romagna, you know, people from that specific region. It's really part of our history. So there's all these factors that are combined that, uh, you know, mix of emotion, mix of presentation, it's way more than just a marketing event, mm -hmm. no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I would like to, to add a couple of things. Uh, if, if you look at the presentation this morning, there were two words, uh, passion and family. And I think that if you are a diehard fan from Italy, like me, I went to see my first races when I was four in Monza, and I never missed a race in Italy after that. Um, I think the passion and family is really the glue between Tifosi and the Scuderia Ferrari. Uh, I think that I'm pretty sure this is not just my story, but the story of every Ferrari fan, at least in Italy. It all started with your grandfather. Then the legacy was passed to your father and then to yourself, your brother, your sister. And then I'm trying to do the same with my daughters. And again, I think that this legacy thing is really the glue between Ferrari and the Tifosi and also the Tifosi community itself. Mm. And I think that You could see today with so many Tifosi in the background, mm -hmm. I spot a lot of very uh, common faces that I can meet usually and I can meet usually at racetrack. So again, this is a kind of a family and it's a kind of an extended family, right? And I think that the fan app, again, it can act as a glue between uh, the old days Tifosi like me, <laughs> 40 years old, and the new wave of Tifosi, right? Uh, young Tifosi that are coming into the Formula One thing in the new era of the Formula One thing uh, and it can act again as a glue and as a common framework to interact with each other not just with the Scuderia but also with each other and make the community even bigger and even more excited it's, a, it's really kind of a ritual right and when you have the reveal of the uh, F1 Challenger every, every year it's a kind of a new chapter that you add to the legacy And I think that this year with the new uh, fan app is a pretty brand new chapter. I think I'm pretty excited for what's coming in this season. Yeah, I think the community is the is the really special thing. Right? I mean, when I before I moved to the US, I lived in Oxfordshire, where a number of Formula One teams are based. In fact, the town I lived in had a Formula One team, but there wasn't that sense of passion that you get with Ferrari and the Tifosi fans. You know, it's it's really special. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I, I can add that you can could really feel it today here, um, not only with the Tifosi that were broadcasted, but there were also lots of Tifosi behind the, uh, the fences that were just looking and, and trying to get a glimpse of the drivers of the car. So it was really it was really an emotional day for all of us. And, and even being here after four years, um, it, it's really a passion that wakes you up every single morning, I have to say so. I can really share what, what you are saying, and I'm really happy to, to hear from Tifosi and uh, as well as colleagues that we are working together on this, on this um, fan app product. Um, it's really wonderful um, witnesses of what our fan base is really out there. So every day we do have this kind of uh, demonstration. And so it's really important for us, as a, again, to build this one-to-one -one relationship. And this, the fan app is really... Uh, the bridge between us, ourselves, and the Tifosi. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, this is really all about the fans and every fan has their personal story, right, as to why they're into F1. I'm hearing as a child, you go to your first race, of I'm like, I live in Austin, Texas, where we just got a track a few yeah. years ago, and I need to step up my game, you know? Uh -huh. And so something like this app and this fan app is really going to bring that together and bring more fans in and nurture not only new fans, but the fans who have been around for decades. So let's kind of switch gears a little bit here and talk a little bit about the AWS and Ferrari relationship. So uh, AWS and Ferrari have been strong partners for a number of years. And so, Sylvia, tell us more about Ferrari. Yeah, sure. I will be more than happy to do that because, as, as you mentioned, we have been partners for a, for a lot of years, actually. We have been working, building our first uh, websites on AWS years and years ago. 
Um, then we built our Cal configurator on, a, on AWS. So if you go online and you try to configure your Ferrari, <laughs> you, can, you can really access something which is built on AWS. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty unique because we have millions of a combination of uh, Ferrari features that you can select. So this is, this is quite a complex and very advanced um, application. And then so a few years ago, we started really this, uh, this new, uh, in, let's say, era of our relationship, of our partnership. And now we really built a partnership and um, we are working together on lots of streams, lots of uh, strategic streams for Ferrari. So first of all, for sure, we, uh, we, AWS is with us on all the modernization journey that we are um, trying to build on our infrastructure and applications landscape, which is really key because, I mean, Ferrari has been around for 75 years. We are a 75 year old company. And sometimes you feel it on your IT infrastructure, you know, this, <laughs> this kind of uh, classical or vintage <laughs> uh, layers. Um, so it's really important for us, this uh, move to cloud, this modernization journey, which will enable us to have more reliable, more secure infrastructure and uh, more flexible infrastructure. I mean, if you wish, this FANAP, for example, is really a demonstration of how you can build an application which is able to scale, uh, which for us will be a key point because, I mean, even the, the, the data, the, um, the download that we had for the FANAP were much, way more than we expected for this launch. And today we had a lot of concurrent users uh, all together that were going through the live streaming of the, of the car launch. And only an infrastructure like the cloud uh, infrastructure provided by AWS can really make sure that everything would go smooth as it went today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I see one with the other. Uh, Yes, so we are extremely satisfied of, of this, for example, and um, and this will be part something that we have to build for all of our applications to be really able to be um, resilient, to be uh, always on, to be secure, to be flexible, because of course we also need to always innovate and uh, I mean, also based on my experience coming from uh, um, from from this business, it's really important. And the cloud is what can help you to, to be flexible and to innovate at a different pace. Um, we are working together on a lot of other streams from high performance computing for, for simulation, for example, uh, which is a key part of our um, development, product development. Uh, so we are working on uh, vehicle performance, um, on, uh, on hybrid, um, and consider that the we really experienced that huge benefits going from HPC on-premise to HPC on the cloud. Uh, we went from 12 hours to two hours for some kind of simulations. So we, now we are able to run many more simulations in parallel. Even so, there were some use cases where we were not even able to perform at all. And now we are with, uh, with HPC uh, on AWS. So that's really a key use case for us. We are building a lot of applications um, let's say customized applications on AWS for some of our unique processes where you don't find um, a product on the market. Um, and then we are really free to, to, to invent our own applications. We are even building our intranet and our uh, employee application on AWS. Uh, I don't know, I can go on for a <laughs> really a lot of, of uh, other use cases. We are building our CI CD tool chain uh, for in vehicle software development on AWS, that this is key uh, because you need software tracked and uh, uh, stored for uh, homologation. So this will be a regulatory requirement. So it will really go into our co core business. So I mean, for us, it's really today part of what we are as uh, digital and data. Um, many of the things we are running today, we are many of the of the strategic projects are run on AWS. Well, it sounds like you certainly found the right partner, which is which is great to hear. <laughs> so let's go back to the AWS team briefly. So, Adrian, what was it like to be Marinello and work with the engineers behind the app, you know, alongside the racing engineers? Well, first, let me, let me maybe just say Marinello is a special place. So, Stefano, you're very lucky to come from this wonderful part of the Emilia-Romagna region. And if you haven't visited, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, uh, to, to take a visit. But, I mean, 
just walking around this this relatively small town, you know, the history of Ferrari and its founder Enzo is steeped everywhere. You can't turn a corner, uh, you can't go to a bar without seeing some sort of reference uh, to, to some of the ideals and the history of this amazing company in that area. Um, you know, I, I still remember the first time that I arrived to Gestione Sportiva. This is the facility. Uh, that you saw a, a, a little bit in the video there, um, you know, where all the magic happens. And, and you know, I, I remember walking in and, and really just saying, wow, this is where the history and, and today's innovation meets. And, um, you know, the facilities definitely talk to that. The people who welcome you talk to that. A little bit like what Stefano number two said, you know, it feels like a family. I felt welcomed from the moment that I really arrived. I mean, it really started obviously with Sylvia's team of technical specialists, uh, you know, as I, as I was working uh, with the team on the app throughout most of last year, you know, they showed a huge amount of enthusiasm for, for this, not just this project, but how they can really think deeply about, you know, being t uh, you know, obsessed. Here at AWS, we talk mm -hmm. about being customer obsessed. Yeah. And so I could, I could feel the same um, the, the same uh, deep level of, of, of passion. I could feel the same level of willingness to, to really delight them. Uh, and it came through in, in even the challenges that we had, you know, through the design process and through some of the integration and implementation process. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Steve, I'm an engineer. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if I go back to those early days and Stefano, you started a little bit more than me. I think my first F1 race was when I was seven years old. I, I mean, obviously, apart from just the, the competition and obviously the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the cars that, you know, the, what they're able to do on these tracks and the speed that they're able to get to. What I quickly realized is, is the engineering that goes into these cars is absolutely amazing. You know, these are the most engineered vehicles on the planet. Everything that you see, everything that we saw in the reveal today was engineered by someone in that facility, you know, from materials and, and electronic components and even the software that goes in on the cars. And so one of the things that I was very much looking forward to is being able to interact with the other engineers, people like Enrico Cardile, who's the head of Aero. You know, I've had many discussions with Enrico, you know, about you know, some of the, the, the shapes that are used in the cars and, and how, you know, those shapes can be molded in a different way just to literally get tenths of a second off. And people like Enrico Guartieri, uh, Guartieri sorry, who uh, heads up the power unit. Um, you know, you saw Laurent Mickey's, uh, who I've, again, had the privilege of not only spending time with in Maranello, but also at some of the races, you know, and, and obviously he's, he's really thinking about you know, the anatomy of the race weekend and, and the strategies that are employed. It's a huge operation and there's huge pressures, obviously, that go along with that. Um, and those pressures all concentrate, obviously, down, you know, to, to one race on one mm -hmm. weekend. There is a lot that's going on there. Uh, and so, uh, again, that was amazing. You know, just a couple of hours ago, I, I was, you know, sitting with, with our engineers looking at the same dashboards that I know Sylvia's team was just to see how the app was going and it, and, and it performed, you know, amazingly well. Brilliant. Great. That's good to hear. So we got to hear a little bit about the fans. We're talking about the why behind this, but now we're going to move a little bit into the how. And so Adrian, you're giving us a preview of, you know, where we're going from that engineering mindset to see, you know, how is this built? How is this? possible so the episode and get a little bit more about the architecture behind the fan app and then we'll pick back up after this clip i really want to dive deeper into how scuderia ferrari architected that in their fan app so luca i see we've got app sync right in the middle of your architecture how are you using it the main reason we put in the center of this architect the app sync is decoupling the client sign from the backend side, especially the Ferrari system like content management system, digital asset management. And we do that to different uh, type of resolvers, HTTP and Lambda that link to the CMS and DAMS. And now I see you've got the caching 
uh, feature turned on for AppSync. Why is that? It's a matter of optimization in terms of uh, speed performance and also costs. Speed performance because we are able to retrieve uh, content information or asset information from the backend system mm -hmm. in a millisecond because we are avoiding to reach this system directly. This event-driven architecture is a very smart design. The different phases of the Grand Prix race, which include free practice, qualifying, and race day means that fans from all over the world are making a large number, but relatively short-lived number of requests for data. This spiky nature of the workload makes services like AWS AppSync and Lambda ideal. Okay, so how do your fans get in? It's basically interaction with the application is goes through the uh, WAF for security reason, because we prevent common attack uh, from the client side to the CAN system. Then the calls go to the cache and the AppSync uh, part. And that's a smart move as well. You've got obviously fans all over the world. It's a managed firewall, so you don't have to scale it or, or, or worry about it. There are so many ways to, to interact with, with our fans. You know, at first, when we are at the race weekends, we can actually hear them, we can, we can see them, we can feel them pushing us. But really, there is so many other moments that we want to share, not only with the fans that are at the race tracks, but with our fans all over the world. So it will be fantastic to actually have ways to communicate with them live during the race weekends and in between the race weekends. When it comes to fan engagement, identifying who they are is clearly not enough. I wanted to understand how Scuderia Ferrari uses authentication and personalization to tailor their experience within the app. When the user have the first interaction with the application, the backend system return two different ID. One is the personalization ID, and the other one is the authentication token. The authentication token, uh, we use it to call the backend uh, APIs, and the personalization ID will be stored on the DynamoDB, and this ID is really important to manage the user preferences already stored on the, on the DynamoDB. Right, so, because users are storing things like their favorite driver or their favorite track. So Marcello, we learned how the fans request access to your content, but how do you serve it up to them? So everything starts from here, where we have our CMS, content management system, and the digital asset management. Our CMS is a custom solution. It's API-driven, runs on AWS, uses CloudFront CDN, and it's headless. It means that it can decouple the, uh, the content, uh, the raw content from the representation on the front end. And the media asset actually live on the digital asset management. So all videos and photo galleries are there. And we also have the archive, which is a very important piece of content. So let's run through that app sync interaction. So from the app, we reach out to the CMS every time we need some data via these Lambda function and resolvers that translate uh, all the requests that are made by app sync to fetch the right information on the CMS. So it's a really efficient way in which to serve all that information up through the API layer. It's clear that Scuderia Ferrari are not only investing deeply in producing all this inside content, but ensuring that it's delivered to fans in a reliable and scalable way. After all, that's the foundation of any great digital experience. So can you share with me what type of new experiences you plan to bring to the fans? Absolutely, it starts with content. So we create unique, access from the content perspective, unique interviews, live broadcasts from the paddock, bring the whole experience to life. So wherever you are in the world, you can be with us in the Scuderia. And then personalization. Personalization is fundamental. As we talk to this audience and we begin to build the audience out, making sure that we're delivering the right content to you, what you're interested in through personalization will be essential. So, Marcello, how do you know what the users are really interested in? Yeah, the key piece is, is Pinpoint. Pinpoint is the AWS service which we use to uh, monitor and measure all the analytics uh, uh, and the engagement that our users have with the campaigns, uh, with the notification, but also in general with the content. So Pinpoint let us measure, for example, how long a user has seen, has watched a video, uh, how many interactions has had with a photo gallery, how many pictures in a photo gallery has seen. Okay, so how do you store that data? 
So the most recent, recent information stay in pinpoint, but then we uh, send that via uh, the firehose to this S3 repository where we store all the information on user behavior. SRFR is a way of, uh, of being, is a way of behaving. It's, uh, it's what we like to think is differentiating us from all the other teams. In within these two words, we have our passion for the sports, we have our passions for innovations, we have how we like to uh, do things, how we like to behave. Perhaps each of us has a different way to interpret it, and also our fans will have a different way to contribute to our visions through these two words. So I see another favorite service of mine, Amazon Personalize. How are you using that? Yeah, so Personalize is a key piece of the architecture and it draws data from different sources. So it draws user preference from Dynamo, it draws user behavior from this S3, it also draws content metadata from, from the CMS. Right, so it's really bringing in a lot of different data sources together and of course it's machine learning driven, right? Yeah, sure. So Personalize can feed all this data to the, to the machine learning model to recommend the best uh, content, the best personalized, personalized content to our user. In. As fans, we're always hungry for the latest updates, interesting statistics, and deeper analysis of how the team are performing on the track. This requires bringing in lots of data sources from different places, processing it, and putting it in the hands of fans in a way that really helps them get new insights. And Scuderia Ferrari know a thing or two about that. Data has changed the sport very much. When I started, uh, we already felt we had a lot of data, but obviously it, it had nothing to do with where the sport is at right now. As uh, the level of complexity uh, that is embedded with our sport is, is everywhere. It's in the car itself, it's in the uh, complexity of our simulations, it's in the wind tunnel and the uh, CFD analysis we are doing, it's in the power unit. Now with all the hybrid part of it and the energy management that plays such a key role into the overall lap times. So yes, data are now central to uh, the core performance of our racing cars. Data is clearly important to Laurent and Ferrari, but I really want to find out how they use it in the fan app. So that starts from, from this piece of the backend, uh, where we have this telemetry tool that our operators can use to pick uh, any, any telemetry data for any race. So at the end of our race session, we pick normally the, the fastest lap, and we push that via this API gateway to the app. We then have this Lambda function that it's, is responsible to uh, manipulate this data and validate and, and store this into the S3 bucket uh, in a way that it's ready to be consumed from these other resolvers uh, that uh, collaborate with AppSync to manage the final composition of the result that we show in the app. Fantastic. All right, that's great. We'll be back with more from the This Is My Architecture video later on. But to get started now, I wanted to ask Adrian, and, and no pun intended here, what were the driving principles behind the app? Well, that sounds like a little bit of a pun, Steve. Uh, but <laughs> I love, love the references. Let's, let's do those all day long. You know, I think, again, I was lucky enough to be involved in this project fairly early on. And, and I think what really became apparent was, was three things. I mean, we covered some of this already even in the app, uh, in the video, but scale. You know, what, the, the, the spiky nature mm -hmm. of Formula One races means that, you know, you have the huge peaks that are typically happening, not just on race day, but leading up to race day. There's a lot that happens on a, a Thursday, Friday. There's this almost buildup that happens, uh, you know, as the drivers arrive to the track and there's news that comes out and videos and reflections that the drivers are sharing with the fans. Then obviously, you know, on the Fridays, we have what's called the free practice um, uh, or Friday and Saturday, we have these free practices and, and these and these uh, times where um, you know the 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 the, the, the actual um, qualifying uh, generates a lot of chatter uh, amongst the the fans, and so you know the uh, videos and the, the the post feelings are now going to be shared. You know, obviously, uh, you know through the app. There's broadcasts that now that the team are also going to bring. So scale is really, really important uh, as, the, as that first principle. You know, the second principle 
I would say that's really important is cost, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the big changes in Formula One uh, that was introduced in, in, in 2021 is a cost cap. And so I know uh, Sylvia and lots of other members of the team are thinking about, you know, how do we put <clears throat> the greatest amount of, uh, you know, infrastructure and, and, and capability to things um, that matter the most and, and how do we maybe, you know, save on, on others. So it is the cost caps in Formula One are forcing a lot of the F1 teams to rethink a lot of things and, and what better way than a serverless architecture than, than we just saw. I think the final thing is also, you know, Ferrari are a huge brand, as as we've I think seen, and you know, the the not just the following that it has in Italy, but the following that it has really worldwide. Every time there's a piece of news or every time there's a new product, that curiosity is sparked everywhere around the world. And so, being able to provide that consistent experience without a management overhead or a very minimal management overhead was also really important, almost like an autopilot, if I could use another another pun here. But, you know, being able to have the architecture really look after itself, um, you know, during all these different phases, during all these different uh, workload profiles uh, was a really important consideration. Yeah, and, so... And then, Adrian, sorry, maybe I can also add to that that another key component for us was the personalization element that was also mentioned in the videos. Uh, because, of course, if we really wanted to have this reach uh, to, the, to our tifos, to our fans, it's really important then to be able to personalize the, the, the content. So th there will be a lot of effort on our side to provide the most exclusive, the most interesting content. And then we also need to tailor it to the interest of the, of the single person that is accessing the app, that is sharing with us their preferences, their their behaviors, their interests, and then we can really tailor the, the content to, to their interest. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so people can go in, they can select what it is that they want, and AWS is basically, you know, giving them what it is that they want to see so that you keep them engaged with the app. So... Mm -hmm. Stefano, yeah. as I'm going to take it to you, you had a vision for um, AppSync being the right technology for the fan app. Tell us more about why you knew that AppSync was the right technology to build this app. Yeah, let me say this. I think that as always at Amazon, we start from the customer and we work backwards, right? So uh, what we do at the beginning of what we did at the beginning of the conversation about uh, the fan app, uh, we started from requirements, and Adrian already mentioned scalability, the ability to manage infrastructure in, in a smart way. And uh, I think that, and, and the fact that we have spiky workloads, right? Mm -hmm. But um, spiky workloads is not just for the app itself or the API itself. It's also something that is really important to evaluate for everything that is downstreams, for, for all the backend system you, you might have in your in your ecosystem. So that was the first thing uh, to evaluate. The second thing was, if you connect the dots of what Adrian and Sylvia already said, um, you can see that you have multiple data sources for, from, for contents, right? So you have the content management system, you have the digital asset management, you have recommendation engines. And if you look at the picture uh, in the video, you have multiple data stores. You have DynamoDB as a database. You have multiple S3 buckets. So the problem with this situation is that you can't interconnect the application directly with all these services. It's not really efficient. So you need a decoupled layer, right? The other thing is that you need to create an architecture that is actually future-proof. So it means that you're not just designing the architecture for your day one set of features, but also for what's coming next. And maybe you don't even know what's coming next at, at the end of the day, right? So you need to create something. You need to have something in between your application, your backend system that enables you to have your architecture evolve over time. So if you connect all these dots, let me say this, uh, it was clear that AppSync was the right technology because it's, it's a managed GraphQL uh, API service. So it allows you to not be really worried about infrastructure. So it can really follow the spiky workloads and the spiky traffic that you might have. Uh, it's a kind of a serverless system at the end of the day. It really gives you the ability to connect multiple data sources at the same time. 
So you decouple your mobile application with your backend system. And again, allows you to have your architecture evolve because you can always add another data source or maybe substitute a data source with something new. Or you can add a new feature that actually implies a merge between data coming from data source A and data coming from data source B. So the fact was, okay, we have potentially millions of users. We need to be very efficient and we need to collect data from multiple data sources. Because of the nature of GraphQL, which is at the core of AppSync, at the end of the day, what you have is that with just one request, you can really collect data from multiple data sources in parallel, merge this data, and provide the result as a payload back to the client application. And this is really efficient if you think about millions of users connecting at the same time to the API. So the concept was, okay, we must be efficient, we must be scalable, we don't need to worry about the infrastructure, right? But there was one more thing, and was real time. Mm -hmm. So the concept was, okay, uh, we must create a fan engagement application at the end of the day. And especially during specific events, like during a race or during the last lap and in a qualifying session, you really want to provide data in real time or provide a way to users to interact with each other in real time. And then again, AppSync was the right service to use because it provides real time capabilities through basically kind of a pub sub mechanism uh, through a technology that is called subscriptions. Um, again, based on GraphQL. So you can basically be notified in real time of something that happened in the backend system. So a data that is exchanged or new data that has been inserted into any backend system. So any backend system or any data source can be basically an event producer in real time. And then you can broadcast that event to millions of connected clients. And you don't have to worry about managing connection. If you think about managing millions of WebSocket connection during <laughs> big event, it's really hard, right? Yes. Uh, with AppSync, you basically manage it through writing uh, your subscription interface, and that's it. So really, the real-time capabilities was, I think, the last piece that drove us to say, OK, we, need, we really need AppSync on top of it. And last but not least, the caching system you saw in the video. Caching is super important. Again, you have millions of connected devices. You don't want to have those millions of connections uh, reach out your backend system. You just want to have a cache to have better performance. So everything was on AppSync. That's why it was the right service. Yeah, it certainly sounds like AppSync, you know, is, a, is at the heart of, of, of this application. But we also saw in the video that pinpoint and personalize were in there. So Adrian, I know we're going to come back and talk about uh, some of those later on in the show. But for now, can you just sort of briefly add some color about, you know, how those are well suited to the application? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it, and to Sylvia's point, we didn't want to just provide any experience. This is not, you know, a social media feed that you expect your users to curate, we do the work, or Ferrari wants to do the work on behalf of its, of its fans. So there was really two services that we looked at that really work very, very well together. So the first one is, as you mentioned, is AWS Personalized. So what, what Personalized does is it allows developers to quickly develop and uh, deploy recommendations at scale using machine learning. So what it does is it draws uh, you know, things like content access and usage and, and behavior um, uh, into a central data source where it can be processed. So from the fan app perspective, you can imagine, you know, we're, we're tracking things like, well, when you first register, actually from the, from the time that you first open the app, we ask you about favorite car, favorite driver, favorite track. That already starts to build up a bit of a picture of what the, the user may be interested in. But then we're also, you know, grabbing a lot of uh, usage behavior, things like which screens that the users are spending time on the actual content itself, which content are they accessing? How long are they accessing it for? You know, where are they moving to next? So being able to grab all of this data uh, and then, you know, build and use a, a customized ML model for further recommendation uh, really, helped, uh, really helped do that. So what's really cool about Personalize is that it comes with a machine learning model out of the box. 
You don't need to be a data scientist. You don't need to go write your own algorithm, but you can tune it. And we are certainly doing that based on those profiles that we talked about before is, you know, but if you are interested in Charles Leclerc, well, chances are because of the fact that we've collected that information uh, at the front end, you know, we're going to tune some of the content delivery uh, back to you. The second service, obviously, is AWS Pinpoint. Now, what's really cool about Pinpoint is that it allows you to segment your communications between these different uh, audiences. And so even if we don't have a lot of information about an individual user, what we do is, you know, we get some, uh, you know, we're building up a profile picture of like-minded uh, T4Z mm -hmm. that might be coming from a certain um, era, uh, Stefan and I think we've already we've already said we're definitely old school, um, but you know being able to to segment um, the different types of fans and then you know connect with them through services like SMS and email and app notifications. You saw Marcello talk a little bit about uh, that, but you know taking those open uh, articles, photo views, watch through rates of the videos. We then do what build up what's called campaigns and journeys, so that we can really target what we think the users are going to uh, uh, are going to use the most. So it's those two um, pieces that really come together on, say, a race weekend. You can imagine, you know, uh, Monza, which I've also had the privilege of going to, you know, which is a huge race. You know, being able to segment down to especially those fans that are in that area, mm -hmm. um, you know, and based on those profiling capabilities, it, it, it's huge. The last thing I did want to talk on as well, because I think Stefano was talking on it, uh, you know, we, these services need to interact with existing systems. So, you know, in AppSync, we have custom resolvers that can talk to anything that's API driven. But what is really cool about why you would use these services on AWS is the native connectivity that it has to existing AWS services. Like, you know, uh, App Pinpoint natively integrates, as we saw a little bit there, um, you know, with, with S3 and Redshift and, and, and Spark. So, you know, being able to do post-processing in this highly distributed system, um, you know, really offloads and really creates this um, kind of microservices architecture that, that is really conducive to this type of workload. Nice. So we'll now watch the rest of the video and then we'll come back and pick up with Sylvia and the rest of the AWS team to break down what's next. The fan app will never stay still. We'll be constantly iterating it, developing it and delivering new technologies all the way through its life. So you will always have an ever increasingly useful app in your pocket. For the first time, Formula One reached a worldwide television audience of over 445 million last year growing fast in emerging countries and attracting a younger and more diverse generation. So it's no surprise that Scuderia Ferrari is looking to expand its passionate global fan base in more innovative ways. Ferrari recently celebrated 75 years of racing. Over that time, the team have won the Constructors' Championship 16 times, and they've had some of the competition's best drivers pilot their cars, including Juan Juanmael Fagno, Niki Lauda and Michael Schumacher. What a remarkable legacy. Leveraging the power of the AWS cloud and modern personalization, the app is able to understand us fans a whole lot better. As the most data-driven sport on the planet, it's providing unique insights into the team, bringing us closer to the action. It's a new era in power, performance and passion at Scuderia Ferrari. So you'll be able to see the full video uh, on YouTube after this show's broadcast. So we'll give you the link later on for that. Um, for now, let's talk a little bit with Sylvia about, you know, what can fans expect from the app this coming season? So as, as Charlie was mentioning, we will be curating the, the content uh, to make sure that we do provide unique content, ex exclusive content. 
Um, and actually, I think that one of the most exciting features we have is really these live broadcasting capabilities. So we can really have a behind the scenes um, content that will be funneled through the app. Um, so you can really see what the drivers are experiencing, what the team is experiencing, Maranello and the track. So the, there is a lot of things that we, we will be uh, exclusively, exclusively <laughs> into the app. And I think this is the, 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 the first, the, the, the key point of, of all these. Um, I also have to say that um, we had an amazing uh, response from our fans already in these few, few, first few days that since we launched the app because most of them are really registering in the app. So they are giving us consent to, to track what the, the, their preferences and behaviors are, which of course is not for us a, a matter of tracking what people do, but it's just uh, understanding anonymous, anonymously what the people are interested in and being even more able to tailor the content to what is really being liked, what the people are um, looking and watching and watching again. So um, this is really something that will enable us to provide relevant content, which is what everything is all about when you do have this kind of app uh, that want to engage the, the, the fan, the Tifosi, um, and making them feel part of the family, even though they are miles and miles away from, from Maranello. So um, that's really what, what we want to push into the app, uh, part of uh, the, the magic that is happening on the track and here in Maranello through to our fans. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot to look forward to this year for the Ferrari team and its fans, you know, not even just fans, they're family now, right? And so for the AWS team and the Tafasi, what are you looking forward to most this season? Adrian, I'll kick it to you. Yeah, again, uh, and I'm sure S Stefano would relate to this, you know, I can never get enough news, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always you know, on these different uh, websites and following my, my Twitter feeds. Uh, but this is really the first time that I'm going to get this really curated view around what I'm interested. Um, I think, you know, Sylvia said it best, but being able to look at what's happening uh, outside of the track environment uh, and what's going on in Maranello is, is really exciting. So first of all, I'm looking forward to this, you know, the journey, the week to week races and the build up that happens and, how, you know, listening to how not just the drivers and the team principal feels, but also how some of the extended field, the team feels. Um, that, that's really important. Um, you know, there's a lot that actually happens throughout a race that people probably don't see in just a regular broadcast. You know, a really good example is, you know, you see upgrades that are brought to the car on, on certain tracks. And uh, you know, being able to hear from people like Enrico Cardile, who's going to talk about some of the upgrades specifically and go into some pretty technical detail. Um, I'm really excited about that because I love technical detail, but I'm really getting a direct um, account uh, and direct feedback from them, from, you know, the, the extended team about how the car is shaping up, how preparations are going for, for that next race. I think there's a level of intimacy that we have never seen before in Formula One. Yeah, I can, I can definitely add to that. Uh, it's uh, So first of all, I'm ready for the season, right? So with the Ferrari app, of course, <laughs> China app, and then uh, the pretty good Formula One TV app. That's the way I'm watching TV in the Formula One season here in the US. It's pretty awesome, by the way, as um, Adrian was saying, it's uh, telemetry and all the stuff. So, and of course, my official hat. So that's, uh, that's the official Sunday hat and everything. So ready, ready, absolutely ready for the season. But, you know, putting set the passion aside, hard to do. But anyway, let's try to do it. And, uh, you know, even at CES, as AWS, we had an entire wall dedicated to digital customer experience, as we call it, right, in AWS. And uh, Silvia, for example, mentioned the configurator. We had a demo of the configurator at CES, obviously, and other, many, many other stuff. Thing is, uh, customer experience is holistic. We see all that all around the place, right? So it... Think about the traditional cars, let's put it this way. Pre-sales, while you're watching a, a TV commercial during the Super Bowl or uh, at the dealer or inside the new car or after sales, right? So there's a whole holistic experience. Translate that for fans, 
pre-season, in-season, pre-race, post-race, during the race, all these moments uh, and where really you want to be near, close by, as you said, Adrian, right? You want to give all these insights, some special information, some, you know, really to feel close to that. And all of this is enriched with data and artificial intelligence, as we pretty saw very, very well during the presentation of the app personalized and the other services. And the surprising user interfaces, HMI systems, what we call the big loop, right? So you get the data, you form an artificial intelligence, multiple artificial intelligence, not just one, to serve different purposes. One is personalization, but I'm pretty sure others will emerge while you get experience using the application. And the CNCD pipelines, I was happy that Silvia mentioned this aspect specifically because we are talking about software. And Ferrari is the place where I learned agile because the race, it's every two weeks and start at 2 p.m. That's it, right? <laughs> you need to be you need to be in time with your software delivery because otherwise the car will start, right? Kind of, so absolutely interesting. And we discussed this, by the way, in uh, two of the episodes of All Things Automotive, the series that I'm hosting on uh, automotive technology were dedicated to digital customer experience. And uh, one with uh, our general manager, Wendy Bauer. And in other episodes, we even, for example, had Alexa giving a test drive so our own Alexa, Amazon Alexa, giving a test drive of a new car for a, for a person. So you, you see how the things are becoming interconnected, powered by AI, powered by powerful user experiences. So, yeah, looking forward to all of it. I can't wait, honestly. Uh, I 100% agree with Adrian and Stefano, but just let me give you a different angle about the app and the new season this amazing app. <laughs> um, I think that one very interesting thing is I'm planning to um, go to three races this year, uh, the two Italian races, Imola Monza and the one, one of the uh, United States race. Uh, I think that having the most updated version of contents directly from the Scuderia is super important if you are at a racetrack. I mean, if we, if we take the Polo Monza once again, hopefully, I mean, people start getting crazy. Sorry, Silvia, for that, but, you know, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> people start getting crazy, right? And you start cheering, you start dancing, you start whatever, right? Screaming, probably. But it's very hard to stay updated about what's next, right? There are some rules that must be confirm maybe someone take uh, uh, I don't know a penalty because of a yellow flag those things right and if you are at a racetrack it's not always easy to stay updated I think mm -hmm. that getting insights directly from Scuderia of okay how did we take the poll I mean what was the main thing uh, or why we did that specific strategy things like that I think it's super useful if you are on a racetrack and if you are at Die hard fan. Yeah, I would I would agree with that actually. Yeah, having been to a race, ironically Austin, you know, it was actually quite hard to follow what mm. was going on when you're going around the circuit and, and trying to figure out. So having this app available, you know, that's, that's giving you that real time feed, that that's going to be awesome. Well, this has been a fantastic discussion. Um, congratulations, Sylvia, on the launch of the car and the new fan app, um, and thank you so much for joining us today. Similar to Adrian, Stefano, I mean, Stefano, Stefano S. I'll get my teeth in the right place. Um, before we go, do you have anything you want to leave our viewers with? Well, I would just like to say that I will wait for all of you in Maranello, of course. So <laughs> looking really to, to have you there since you were part of this really incredible journey we, we did together. Um, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think that one of the key points of the partnership between Ferrari and AWS is with not only the technology that AWS is providing, but really the people that is working with us and really believing in what we are doing together. So thanks to everyone. All right. Just a reminder, you can watch the full, this is my last episode on YouTube, but don't go there right now because we are going to be back very shortly with some new guests and we'll continue talking about the new thank you so much thank you and Bye. forza ferrari thank you.